Hello. The big news this week, of course, was uh, PDX unveiled the new airport that they've been working on. You've heard me talk about it before, like 2.6 million board feet of Douglas fir on the ceiling, all sustainably sourced. The PDX carpet is back. Everybody's super excited about that. There are trees growing inside the airport. They've got a whole bunch of new local vendors that have set up shop in the PDX airport. Powell's is back with a new facade and all those kind of things. It's just a, it was a huge celebration for the city. We've always been incredibly proud of our airport and uh, often refer to our city as PDX. So it was really nice to see the airport come back. Nice to see the community so excited about it. I honestly can't do it justice, so I'll link up to some other videos that describe the new airport and all its, uh, you know, accoutrement of the new airport. But the, the ceiling is really just phenomenal and uh, well worth your time to take a look at that and, and kind of hear the story of how it was built. So congratulations to our friends at the Port of Portland, and I hope you get the chance to experience PDX soon. What's that? No, no, no. Every week. No, you just have to subscribe. Just subscribe and, and it'll, it'll pop up on the YouTube or your podcast or whatever. Yeah, every week. No, I do the news every week. Okay? Cool. Talk to you later. Bye. You know, so often people come to Portland and they're like, what should we do? Or they like post to the Portland subreddit. They're like, hey, I'm visiting Portland. Where should I go? What should I visit? Where should I eat? Where should I drink? What should I, you know, what, what, what touristy things should I do? But I'll be quite honest, as somebody who lives in Portland, where every single day I'm like, somebody told me about this new amazing restaurant, or somebody told me about this new amazing store, or what about this coffee shop, or this new brew pub or whatever. Like, it's hard as a local to make these decisions. That's why I'm really happy to announce that Travel Portland has put together an app to help us all, tourist or local, figure out things we could be doing near us. And it's called the Near Me Now app from Travel Portland. Uh, it's available on iOS and Android. It's also a web-based app. So even if you don't want to be surfing it on your phone, you can do it from your web browser or from your desktop. Um, really like a great collection of coffee shops, restaurants, retail locations, bars, you know, tourist locations, just all kinds of things to remind you, if you live in Portland, to remind you how great it is here. And if you're planning to come visit us in Portland, just a really great way to start planning your trip and identifying some places you might want to eat and grab coffee and drink and visit and all that kind of thing. So make sure and swing by Travel Portland, grab that app, start planning what you're going to see. Or if you're here in Portland, maybe go check out the app and figure out what you're going to do this weekend. Okay, this one's just kind of a teaser. I know news is coming, but I can't talk about it. I know it's coming next week, but I just want to give you a heads up that if you've been curious, if you've been like, I remember you talking about that Portland Metro Regional Innovation Hub thing. What's going on with that? Well, actually a lot. There's been a ton of activity around that over the last few weeks in a very positive way that I can't quite yet talk about but I should be able to talk about it next week. So please remain patient for just a little longer, and hopefully by the time I'm recording the show next week, we'll all be able to talk a little bit more about the Regional Innovation Hub here in Portland, and who knows, I may even have some information about the other regional information hubs throughout the state, because they're going to form like a network of activity. So not only will you, as somebody who's pursuing innovation in the Portland area, have access to this hub to get you connected and, and point you in the right direction for resources and those kind of things. The idea is that this network of regional innovation hubs is going to work together to help everybody in the state. So I'll definitely have more on the Portland Metro Regional Innovation Hub, but I may have some details on some of the other hubs as well.
we'll just have to wait and see we'll see what happens see what happens next week i can't predict the future i'm just telling you i've been advised that there may be some news coming out so i just want to give you a heads up just keep it between you and me until it's an actual thing but i trust you but show up next week let's chat a little bit about the the regional innovation hub stuff cool cool in startupy kind of news the an organization that's very near and dear to the portland startup community has rebranded yet again now this organization originally started by a group of startup founders who kind of came to the conclusion that if business was going to continue to be combative with local government then things weren't going to get done as quickly or as easily as they should be and so their hypothesis was what if we had an organization that enabled government and business to work together to collaborate to to work to solve problems as a team rather than casting aspersions and blame amongst one another and so those founders got together they created what they originally called the portland independent chamber of commerce which came up with just like a cute little acronym peacock and so peacock uh initially started doing the work kind of started testing this hypothesis and and lo and behold it, it worked and and some amazing things started to happen the community kind of rallied around it you know back in those days a lot of peacock's activity was was activating the community they would say hey this you know this food cart pod is at risk so everybody should go eat there this weekend or this uh amazing young dancer is looking to get uh, to new york for a competition so we should kick in and, and help fund that or um how can we how can we help our friends at street roots when it's cold outside and and they need supplies so really community oriented kind of activities that brought the business community but particularly the portland startup community into a role of really being a good steward of community and so with peacock seeing that traction and that success they decided to formalize the organization and it became business for a better portland business for a better portland uh continued to kind of expand its purview it really started focusing time and energy on brick and mortar main street businesses so maybe not just tech startups kind of where it started but but also expanding to local retail and craftspeople who are important to our economy who are really the lifeblood of our economy here in portland and then you know especially throughout the pandemic it really began to expand even to more of a state level where a lot of the activity taking place was having to do with having conversations in salem salem oregon is the is the capital of oregon and so not just focusing on local portland government but also the statewide government and um that was going fine stuff was going well pandemic was rough on everyone things were changing and uh stephen green who is the current executive director he had been the interim executive director for a while and then was named the the executive director of the organization he was like we don't really just have you know it's not it's not obvious who we are and what we do and what we want to do and he really wanted to find a, a way to kind of rally around a very specific ethos and so he and the new board kind of took on this effort of rebranding the organization once again and and they did it most obviously by simplifying the name it's now better portland and better portland is really focused on very much that same original activity that started with peacock which is business and government need to work together and community needs to come together to support businesses in the city so they'll do things like they'll do almost like flash mob activity where they say hey we're showing up at this coffee shop friday morning we'll buy all the coffee you just need to show up come hang out talk to other people or they will bring in you know like an interesting speaker and say we're going to discuss this uh this what's going on in the community 
And so it's really interesting to see how in many ways it feels like the organization has changed, but at the same time, it's really remained true to what the what the founders had originally set out to do. And so they released not only a new name, but a whole new look and feel. There's some new positioning there. Um, you know, just it's a great refresh for a really important organization. And so if you are part of the Portland business community, if you would like to be doing more and having a more positive impact on Portland itself, if you would like to be collaborating with with not only your business peers, but also local government to help improve and and better Portland, then I highly suggest you check out Better Portland. Memberships are available. It's a nonprofit and every little bit helps them do the work they want to do and helps improve our community. So I highly encourage you to take a look at Better Portland. Moving outside of Portland a little bit, our neighbors to the south in Beaverton have the annual Beaverton Startup Challenge that's been run by the Oregon Startup Center now in its 10th year. So the Beaverton Startup Challenge is an opportunity for companies to apply for funding as well as mentorship and other services. It's competitive. So it's not just a apply and you'll get this 25K. I mean, there's some competition among the companies there and some selections that need to take place. But if that sounds interesting to you, if you're building an early stage startup and you'd like to spend some time in Beaverton with the Oregon Startup Center and you would like $25,000 to fund some of your activity, then I suggest you take a look at the Beaverton Startup Challenge and submit your application. It's always an interesting crop of companies they choose every year, and I can't wait to see who they pick this time around. Our friends at AI Portland, always creative with the events, always really good with the community activity. So it should come as no surprise that AI Portland has put together a new event that kind of embodies the, the good old fashioned science fair vibe. They're inviting people to participate in this science fair with their AI projects or with their concepts about artificial intelligence or machine learning or large language models or what have you, but really doing it with the, you know, the good old school science fair kind of field. Obviously having a trade show floor of all kinds of interesting AI science experiments and, and things of the like. I, I would imagine there'll be judges with clipboards wandering around and, and, and judging things and passing out prizes and those kind of things as well, because I mean, what's a science fair without clipboard wielding judges? I mean, really? So, uh, if that sounds interesting to you, that's coming up in September, I believe. I don't have the date written down, but we've got some time now. I'll definitely make sure and link it up so that you can RSVP. But even more importantly, if you have a science project that you would like to have appear on the trade show floor, there's a form you need to fill out, a submission form, and I would encourage you to do that as soon as you possibly can because I know there are going to be plenty of people who want to show off their interesting AI science experiments at the AI Portland Science Fair. So that's it for this week. It was very not quiet, but like there was just like a lot of like a dull roar of news throughout the week. So we got through it pretty quickly. And I, I hope you I hope you had a good week. I hope you're hanging in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work. What's that? This week's news was too short for you. I got a lot more news for you right here. <laughs> 